Boris B. John Saberi is a designer whose intentions can be a bit difficult to parse. The main line offers super expensive, seemingly artisanal pieces similar to CCP, then the Diffusion line, 11, is closer to Rico and Dark Shadow, but the design language you'll find within each of these collections comes off a bit scattershot to me. Some stuff has a grungy, handmade look, other items look ninja-ish, and some stuff is trying to be futuristic and could be described as techware. His ongoing collaboration with Salomon, done under the Eleven Diffusion line, firmly falls into the last category. Now, I've known about this collaboration for years now, I've long been interested in the Zip-Up Bomba 2s, but just never felt they would work with my wardrobe. More recently, I had been getting interested in the XT6s as just a general purpose comfortable sneaker, and thought I might as well just go for the BBS version. The box is what you'd expect from a mainstream athletic sneaker brand, with some 11 by BBS flourishes. Inside, there are no goodies save for a piece of paper explaining the intent behind the collaboration and warning of dye transfer. So these are the Bomba 5s, a low top sneaker with an external lacing system. It is very apparent that the XT6 and possibly XT4 were used as a base for this model, with the sole itself being seemingly identical, but the upper receiving myriad changes which transform the look from running shoe to sci-fi movie prop. In terms of construction and materials, it's not blowing me away, especially relative to the price, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast here. It's a technical, athletic sneaker, so the upper is entirely synthetic mesh, with these plastic or rubber panels as design elements. They are detailed and nice enough to pull off the very ambitious look they're trying to do without looking cheap, without looking like some kind of AliExpress cosplay special, which is very difficult to accomplish with these more out-there techish designs. There are a lot of subtle touches to appreciate here, with tons of different textures like the hexagonal tech pattern on the toe and heel, and the diamond pattern on the midsole. Both the Salomon and 11 BBS branding elements are tasteful as well. It's also important to note that Salomon is a very serious brand, with customers ranging from marathon runners to law enforcement and military, and unlike some of those old Adidas Rick and Raph collabs, this model is heavily parts sharing with real performance shoes. First off, they are quite a bit lighter than I imagined them to be, which typically isn't an endorsement of quality from me, but in the case of athletic sneakers, that's definitely a desirable trait. The soles feature Salomon's Contra Grip, and the specific treading they went with here is extremely aggressive, which is nice to have if you ever find yourself in less than ideal conditions. These also have the quick lacing system, which is extremely easy to use and does a better job of securing your foot than it would appear to. Unlike most fashion statement piece sneakers, these are genuinely capable shoes, and I would expect them to hold up well. While there are a few non-object dyed colorways, I'd say the object dyeing is the single standout element of this collaboration, the reason why you'd shell out the extra cash. If you're not familiar, what it means is that they took a finished shoe, presumably the white model as evidenced by the box, and put it into a vat of dye. The changes made to the upper of this shoe compared to the normal XT6 or XT4 seem to have been done with this process in mind, as the texture on the paneling used has captured the dye in interesting ways. And of course, every pair will have slight variances. These dotted panels have absorbed the most dye and take on the darkest shade of the entire shoe, while the main mesh takes on a stained, splotchy look. By far the coolest part, though, is how the dye interacted with the sole, specifically the hard plastic panels on the midsole where it has seeped in. If you look at the undyed white and black models from this collaboration, they look 100% tech wear, and for me, this object dye transforms the look into something more worn, more organic, and this specific color, dirt grey, is more of a brown oil bath color, giving off an apocalyptic, dirty sci-fi look that wouldn't be too out of place on the set of Dune. It's specifically because of that that I took an interest in these, as I feel it is one of the few more technical sneaker options that can mesh well with a dark avant-garde look. These aren't my favorite shoes ever, but if you're someone who wears a lot of Rick, CCP, Julius type brands, these are a nice thing to throw into your rotation. Maybe take a break from the 5 pound leather boots, wear something more technical, more comfortable, without having to compromise too much on the cohesion of your outfit. They don't work everywhere that my Guidi boots do. For example, I thought the gas mask cargos would be a great pairing, but I don't really think it's working. They seem to pair best with slimmer pants, something like these Rick Owens Mastodon cargos. 
Wearing something like Nike sneakers with these pants would be totally goofy and a waste, but I think these Bomba 5s slot right in without cheapening the look. Of course, you could do a more tech look with these and pair them with something like Acronym, especially in some of the other colorways, but whatever side of the spectrum you're inclined towards, you do need a more out there, intense wardrobe to pull these off, I think. They're just too extreme and detailed looking to blend in with full Uniqlo, like a pair of regular jeans and a white t-shirt. It'll definitely look silly, so keep that in mind. The sizing on these is made unnecessarily complex by Salomon's translation of sizing between EU and US. I'm a true size 9 US, which converts to a 42 EU or IT in basically every other shoe I've ever bought. On Essence, these were only listed in their UK and EU sizing, so I ordered a 42, like I always do, but the box actually indicates these as a size 8.5 US, and they fit too tight for me. I went ahead and ordered the next size up, which was listed as a 42.5 EU on Essence, and the box itself states size 42 and 2 thirds EU and 9 US. Ugh. So these fit me perfectly, and the long story short is that these fit true to size according to the US size listed on the box. I've seen others say that you need to size up in these due to shrinkage from the object dyeing process, which makes sense, but that's not my experience here. When it comes to comfort, these weren't what I was expecting, but not in a bad way. Unlike a pair of fresh Adidas Boost, these are not insanely cushy and plush, and instead provide a more stable, firm platform. I think what's going on here is a bit of an Aeron chair situation, where it's promoting good ergonomics that will lead to long-term consistent comfort and no fatigue, versus something like Boost, which gives that initial impressive comfort but quickly fades. They do have removable insoles, which are Orpholite branded, and I find them comfortable and soft, but again, it's not like a thick memory foam feeling of your foot sinking in. Compared to the X-T6, you're seemingly not sacrificing any practicality here, other than perhaps the desire to maximize their lifespan due to the heightened price. So I paid about $350 for these on the Essence sale, which I feel is a little high. I think $300 would have been better, and that might be realistic, depending on your size and how much effort you put into keeping track of the sales. Now, neither of those prices are a good deal. You can easily get the plain X-T6 for under $150 on sale, but here in the world of hype sneakers, specifically fashion brand collaboration sneakers, I don't think there's anything too egregious going on here unless you pay MSRP, which you shouldn't. These are able to fill a very specific niche role for me, and that's where I'm finding the value in them. There's not a lot that looks like these, to be honest. The closest thing is maybe Raph Adidas Oswegos or Vetmont Reeboks, but I wouldn't wear either of those the way I'm wearing these. I feel like I can swap out my Guidi boots for these when I just want something more comfortable, more practical, and I don't look like a total fool doing it. If you just want a nice athletic sneaker and don't need the BBS look, the regular X-T6, which I'm aware is extremely popular, seems like an amazing shoe option for the sale prices I'm seeing it at. As for these BBSs, if you're like me and find value in the specific styling utility they offer, these are a really cool pickup. They're not my favorite shoes ever, they're not mind-blowing, I'm not basing outfits around them, but I'm happy to have them in my rotation. Well, that's all I've got to say about these, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.